evening. It's a privilege to be here tonight and stand in this place. Uh, this morning, coming down the road, I've been all praying and waiting on the Lord. And coming down the road, I turned on a, a radio minister, Brother Smith, a colored brother. Did you all hear him this morning, any of you? Up at the uh, uh, so High. Some of them would tell me about him preaching and said, you ought to turn him on. I can't just happen to get him this morning. And um, he was certainly telling about how that sin was abounding in the world today. And he was, uh, and I turned over a little farther station from that and come down and heard a, another time I got down here. I was about ready to see if it wasn't too late to come to church this morning when I got <laughs> in. <laughs> so um, we're very, indeed, privileged to be here tonight and uh, serve uh, in the service of the Lord. And talking about Brother Neville and the message the other day to this little lady, our sister, that just went from us. That was, we all know who it was, the Sister Weaver. And thinking about a man here being baptized tonight, she, I baptized her in this pool when I they had to bring her here in a wheelchair. She was dying with cancer, and she just had that night to live. The doctor said, not give her up. She's going to die the next morning. And I went into her home and tried to speak to her about divine healing, and she just kept repeating, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. She said, I'm, I'm not worthy for a minister to be in my house. She said, I'm a sinner. But she said, sir, I don't want to die like this. And so Grace Weber up here took me down there. I just come in tired from the meeting. And there, when I was praying for her and read the scripture to her, and she got saved. Then she could hardly raise her hand up, but she wanted to shake hands with everybody. She just, something happened to her. And while they were shaking hands, I saw a vision of her going to a chicken coop and coming back. I said, oh, it's going to be all right now. And that's 18 years ago. And she's been a jump ahead of that cancer all along. Amen. She died, never died with no cancer. She had a heart attack. She killed her. She had her on oxygen. She died in a heart attack. And then... I think in just at the last one, the people were going out and they sang, Then Jesus came. That's exactly what happened. Oh, he came and spared her life for those 18 years. And I thought, how appropriate that woman probably didn't know what she was doing it. Uh, like that right. again. She might have. But just how appropriate it was to have that part there. Then Jesus came. Now, a little bit before, uh, I hope my great set in for me. I get real nervous. This morning, I was so twisted up. I went up to, to pray, and I, I'm home back here. The family just took them to Arizona. And I'm, so the kid is getting to school, and I'm back here just to, to kind of uh, relax, go hunting. With Brother Woods and a bunch of the brethren here to go out hunting for this coming week. We're going down in Kentucky. And I was been in, I just happened to come in the day that, that Miss Weaver died. And it's just right, I could be here and help Brother Neville in that Amen. funeral. And I don't try to, I do not try to, to say too much about it, or, you know, around people complaining. Because I think one of the horrible things is to see a, a man or a woman that's constantly complaining. I've always thought, God, keep me from it. See, that, that weakens faith all the time, you know. You just, you just, if you, if you, I know as they get older, each one of us, we're going to get something happen and something happen. And I know those little things are going to keep accumulating. That's, as you get older, they just got to. But I think one of the most horrible things is for Satan to crown some person's life, a crabbed old man or an old woman, you see. I, I hope that I don't get to that place. I hope that I can bear it and uh, my burdens and, and get to a spot to where I want my life crowned the glory of God, the long-suffering gentleness, peace, Amen. and meekness, and the, filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, one of my main things that's always hurt me through my life has been a nervous condition that when I get so worn and I get real weary, I get kind of feel like nobody cares for you, you know, and, and you're all, you have it too. I just happen to have yeah. a real overdose of it, you know, and that gets real bad sometimes. I can't hardly, it's tension. And um, that's what does it. And uh, I get to a spot there, and many times, especially so many of those visions, you see, it just gets me, I look at a person, I think, this is a vision. No, 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 it isn't. Yeah, is it not, you see? And you just don't realize what a price goes with that. So oh, then, uh, amen. So then uh, you, you wonder. And then you get to thinking, well, here, then you get off your side and say, well, now, well, what have I done? And here I am, I'm, 
I'm 50 years old and I've done nothing for the Lord and I, I'm getting old and what's all of my... And then you get to get uh, what they used to call the blues. Some of you brethren about my age remember what they used to call had the blues. Probably yeah, used to talk about it. And I wonder what he meant. And I sure know now what he meant. So then you get the feeling that way, which is none of it true. It's just you. You know it. See, you know it. Just you doing that. So I was trying to... Uh, Quiet myself a little bit now and get ready for the, the big push that I hope coming soon. And then uh, uh, through, uh, I've got to go to New York right away and I, uh, to a meeting up there, campaign, and then down Shreveport, and then go back to Phoenix, and then come around the west of the south border of the United States, and then uh, they're making arrangements for overseas now to begin as soon as we can after the first year, maybe. March, April, something like that, where we start in uh, Stockholm or Oslo and go around the world if we can on this next tour. And now I'm home kind of resting up a little bit to get kind of back to myself, uh, uh, kind of recuperated. And if the Lord willing, I'll be back next Sunday from down in Kentucky. Amen. And, uh, and if uh, it's all right, pleasing to the Lord and... Brother Neville, don't mind. Well, uh, I'll try to have the service next Sunday if, if the Lord will. Praise God. And um, if he's just as willing as Brother Neville is, <laughs> I'll be here. Yes, sir. He's just as if he's just as willing about as Brother Neville. And I hope he is. Amen. Now, Amen. see, uh, then I know soon if the Lord willing, I'm going to be gone from you quite a while. And I, just little messages as I pick up a little something on my heart, and I. I feel like I want to express it to you, you see, and we can tell it to you, Now, I've got quite a few of them, five or six that just come to me in the last few days, and I went a couple of days here squirrel hunting out here, and I get in the woods and take me a pencil and paper, see. Now, by the time it gets good in daylight, I back up against the tree somewhere, if I don't go to sleep, I start to pray, and then I, Lord will give me something, I start writing down little notes of it, you see. You know what I mean, when you get to yourself, and then you... Then here I come in, write off on a tablet of paper, and then when I'm called on, I get my tablet and go look into it and see what I can start to see. That's what happened just now. Amen. So now, I want to, if the Lord's willing, to speak just, I'm trying to make, cut down them big long messages, you see, or it takes you hours. Now, the Lord helped me do a pretty short job of it in Chicago the last night there, about 30 minutes, and somebody come around and said, I didn't think it was in you, but you did it. So. <laughs> 30 minutes for about two and a half hours or three, you know. So, uh, maybe I can hurry up tonight, get a little practice, not hold you too long. God bless you. Uh, no matter where ever go, there'll never be a place like the tabernacle. Amen. It's home, sweet home. Praise and uh, I'm in sympathy with the Weaver family, with this precious colored brother that died. I uh, prayed with him a little while before he went. And... Uh, fine character and he's at home with God now and it's all over and you have to go anyhow and we all know that so yes, we, uh, may the Lord rest their souls in peace and someday we expect to join in a land yonder where there's no sickness, sorrow, death. Until then, let's just do everything we can for the gospel. Speaking Amen. of tension, I was praying about this morning, what would you do if you didn't have tension? Just think of it. Tension is part of living. Yes. It kind of encouraged me when I thought that. If you had no tension, you'd be like a rag doll. You wouldn't have no feelings. There'd be nothing you could work on. Like a husband and wife. Maybe if she wants to do something and they're trying to work together, especially Christians, and the other one wants, and then when you come together to you find out what she's done, she find out, see, the tension really brings you closer together. Amen. And somebody tells you that, well, it said... Uh, just think of the little wife that went under a lot of tension when you wasn't so good, or the little husband went under some tension when you wasn't so good. Then when it's all forgiven, look how you feel about it. My, you just, see, you've got to have tension. That's all. And just think of feeling. What if you didn't have any feelings, no pain or nothing? Was there be no pain at all? You'd have no feelings at all. See? And if you'd have no feelings, then one of your senses would be gone. See? So, see, everything's just right anyhow. Amen. So, God, just give us grace to stand up to it. That's the thing. Amen. So just stand up to that grace and stand there and say, we know that when this life is over, the great one's on the other side where we're looking to go to. And now we, we remember that all these things, that attention, that some people try to introduce Christianity 
As you're free from worry. You're, no, you're not. You're free from tension. Oh, no, you add tension when you become a Christian. Yeah, that's right. Because you was kind of a flop, go, happy, go, lucky, whatever it was out there, not caring what you did. But when you become a real Christian, every moment you're wondering, am I pleasing my Lord? If I could hear from him. It puts you on tension, puts you on guard. That's what makes you what you are. So after all, tension is a blessing. Amen. This is the way you're looking at it. Amen. That's the way you're looking at it. See, if you just look the other side, there's no, there's, no matter how thin you slice anything, it's still got two sides to it. See? So you want to see both sides. So tension, I think, oh my, it's, uh, what's this tension? If I could have been born without this tension, well, if I wouldn't have had this tension, I wouldn't have been what I am. I wouldn't have been a Christian, perhaps. Yeah, but it was this tension that drove me to Jesus Christ. See? So it's been a blessing thing to me. So then, as Paul said, as though when he had a tension or something other, he, he consulted the Lord to take it away from him three times. The Lord said, so my, Paul, my grace is sufficient. He said, then I'll glory in my infirmity. Yeah. Then when yeah, I'm yeah, weak, I'm strong. See, yeah. as long as to the will of God, all right. Now, I consulted him one time when it used to bother me so bad, it scared me. And he told me about eight or ten years ago, he said, it'll never scare you again. And it never has did it. No, don't worry about it. I just feel it. But I know it's there, but I just go on because it don't scare me no more. So thankful for that. Now, he could have said it won't be no more just as well as you won't be scared no more. So it's his will that it happens. So I just embrace it and say, thank you, Lord. I'll walk that way. Now, let us bow our heads just a moment for, for prayer. Is there a special request for prayer? I see handkerchiefs are laying here. Raise your hand. Lord, bless each one of you children. Uh, Our Heavenly Father, as we now approach thy great majestic throne of grace, uh, because we've been asked to come, we're coming upon the bidding of Jesus Christ. And we come with all of our cares and cast them upon him because he cares for us. What a great comfort that is to know that he cares for us the great god of heaven the creator cares for us his creation we're so glad for that lord what a comfort it is in these times that we're living when there seems to be able to to draw comfort from nothing but your word that's our consolation is your promise and in your promise you said make our request known and if you'll ask anything in my name, I'll do it. And all these great promises, ask and you shall receive. Say to this mountain, be moved. Don't doubt and it'll be moved. All these promises and we can draw from that. This is what we are asking for. Hands went up. They need something, Lord. Thou knowest their needs. Supply, Father. I place my prayer with theirs before thee. My hand up with theirs. Here lays upon this desk here, handkerchiefs laying here. Oh, how the people with faith, gallant faith. Lord, it seems to be just a, something that you've blessed me by, to be able to pray for sick people. Wherever, anywhere, wherever go, it's something about praying for the sick. God, help. Now, I pray with sincerity that you will grant the request of these handkerchiefs that's been placed here the people is asked let your mercy be upon them yes. Lord we understand that Sister Hicks has a woman here that flew all the way in from somewhere to be yes. prayed for with cancer and want to know if she could get her to get over here yes. I pray God that you spare the life of that person granted yes. my little nephew Mikey laying out her sick and vomiting with a high fever just left the door Lord, I, I believe we had the prayer of faith there that you stopped it. I, I, I'm grateful to you feeling the fever going from the boy before I left the room. Now, Lord, I thank you for all these things. Now it falls my lot to speak on thy word. Give us thy word, Lord. Thy word is truth. Bless our souls and give us the, the grace that we need that we might draw it from the promises of God tonight in the word to sustain us through the rest of this week. Granted, bless our pastor, uh, gallant soul, his wife, his children, the deacons, the trustees, and every person that comes in or out of this building. Granted, Father. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to read from two places of the writings of the Lord. I want to read first from 
the book of the Psalms, the 86th Psalm. And then I want to read from St. Matthew's, the 16th chapter, 1 to 3. And I want to read a portion of this Psalm, not all of it, but down about to the 11th verse, which is a little over half of it. And I want to announce this, if I call it text before I preach on it, the uniting time and sign. The uniting time sign. That sounds kind of complicated. Uniting. See? Time. Uniting time. That's what it is now. And the sign of that uniting time. And, and the psalm, a prayer of David, the 86th uh, psalm, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trust in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice, the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good, and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer. Attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Thou Amen. wilt answer me. Amen. Among the gods there is none like unto thee. O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. O Lord, thou shalt glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Listen now. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I I will walk in thy truth, unite my heart to fear thy name. Amen. Unity, see, unite my heart to fear thy name. Amen. I'm talking out of uniting and time sign. Now, in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came tempting him, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, I, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be lower foul weather today, for the sky is red and lower. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky. But ye cannot discern the signs of the time. The Lord add his gracious blessings to the reading of this word. Now, we're talking of this uniting, uh, uniting time. The sign of the uniting time. Yeah. See, Jesus was here in this last scripture reading. He was rebuking the clergy for uh, not being able to discern the time or the sign of the time. Now, that has always been a great thing to the people, see, to be able to discern the sign of the time that you're living. Because God writes it plainly so nobody could escape it. Now, ordinarily, I'd go back and pick up from other ministers, uh, other uh, servants of the Lord in the Bible time, like the sign of Noah's time, the sign of Daniel's time, and, and so forth, the different signs. But I want to bypass that tonight uh, to save time, uh, to be able, but it's always been God's way to give them a, a natural sign of the time so that everyone would know just what time it was. And uh, these Pharisees should have known their time. They should have known what the time was. He said in another place, if you would have known me, you would have known my days. Yeah. It, it's very uh, a great 
thing that we understand, see, without understanding. That's what they always referred to the prophets about. They said, and he had understanding by vision from the Lord. Amen. And the word of the Lord came to the, the prophets of old. See, they had understanding through the word of the Lord by the prophets. And then the prophets give a sign, like one man laid on his side for so long, then turned over and laid on the other side. One man had to strip his clothes. And, oh, there's many things that they did to show the sign that they were living in. Now, we know that the God that made the heavens and earth and, and so on uh, laid out his work that he would describe his time by sign, that same God lives today. Amen. So we must be something as we see the, the time uh, that we're living in, there must be something that somebody's overlooking somewhere. Amen. Amen. Because God would never let these things happen without giving us a definite sign Amen. that we're, uh, that, that we'd understand. Now here is the thing today that the clergy, uh, we don't read it right. It's just like it was then. They didn't think that it was time. They uh, thought that they were living pretty peaceful land and so they wasn't looking for no Messiah. And Jesus has said that his coming would be as a thief in the night when the, when the people would be unaware of his coming. But there were some of the virgins that went to meet him, half of them, had oil in their lamp and was ready. They were watching for that sign. And that's who I'm speaking to tonight. To those who are looking for the sign. Now, the sign of his coming. These signs given by the Lord is given only to believers. The unbelievers never see it. They go right over the top of them and they don't see it. And now just as sure as it is that an angel of God could stand on this platform tonight just as true as, as I'm looking at you and I could be looking at it or you could be looking at it and I couldn't see it or I could look at it and you couldn't see it. Now you know that's scriptural. That's exactly the truth. They saw, you know, Paul fell down, but they, none of them could see that light. That light was right there. When John stood there before the multitudes and thousands out on the bank there, of clergymen and, and sages, great men, and John said himself, he bore a record of seeing the Spirit of God descending like a dove and come down upon him in a voice, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell. And nobody saw it but John. Amen. It was just for him. Do you notice how vivid the sign for the wise man? They looked, it was, they were Hebrews. They wasn't really Indian astronomers. They were Hebrews because they were up there in that country studying astronomy to finish their education. And when they was looked towards Jerusalem, and knowing that they saw those three stars from each one of their, their birth paths of Ham, Shan, and Japheth, of which race they come from each, and they seen them stars in their birth path, that was a sign to them that when those stars were in line, the Messiah was on earth. Amen. Oh, my. No wonder they came. Where is he? Where is he, the born king of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. Where is he? They know that that infant Messiah was laying somewhere because God gave them a sign of the time that God and man were uniting together. What a unity when God united himself in a human body. The principle, the greatest of all the uniting that ever was done was when God united with man and left his, his great strain of being God and stretched forth his tent and tuck in humanity and become one of them. Do you Amen. Amen. Unity. At once that brought peace between God and man forever. How thankful we are. And science was not sent. Now just think. Every man and all the astronomers, the people then day, their clocks was the stars. There was a watchman went up on top of the of the tower, and he would uh, get up there and watch. And he seen when a certain stars was in certain constellations as they were passing. He knew what time it was. 
You remember in the scripture, well, what time is it, watchman? And the watchman come back and told him what hour it was. See, they kept time by the stars. Now, isn't it strange that these stars were exactly in line for three men and nobody else saw it? Just exactly in line. Now, you can be so in line with the Scripture. See? When those stars become in unity, united themselves together in this constellation, three men were also united at the same time. And you can be so united with God in His Word until these things become realities and you can see them and know that they are true. See? The sign of the time. You might look at old time and say, oh, nonsense. But to you it is a nonsense. To you, you're united with the Word. And here it is. Then it's, it's absolutely life for the past. When, 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 when you see this sign, you're not with the believer. And that's who I'm addressing this to, is the believer. For the unbeliever never see it. And it's what a rebuke it would be if he is on earth today to many of our clergy today who cannot read this sign. Amen. The signs that we're reading daily here at the tabernacle and seeing the things that others are reading it and seeing the handwriting on the wall and yet many just ignore it and don't even see it at all. There's nothing to them at all. They don't notice it. Now, notice that in this, so he, uh, he pointed out national signs. Now, when they asked him about this, they wanted signs, and he gave them signs that happened. And they wanted to know what would be the end of the world, what would be the sign of the end. And he pointed them in many places through the scripture about national signs, about heavenly signs in the heavens, and earthly signs. He gave them signs, 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 and just constantly <coughs> uh, signs. And when um, he told them there in one place about a national sign, he said, when you see the nations, see, begin to gather around Jerusalem, see, then we know that the time of their trouble was at hand. When you see Jerusalem come past about with armies. Now, before that they could do this, God, the world had to unite Titus, this great Roman general had to unite his armies together and come around after uh, these Jews had rejected the God-given sign of the time to them. That's the time that Titus united his armies together and come to take the city. First, there had to be a uniting of God's people, so-called, against the Word of God before that the nation could unite itself against God's people. Right. See, the, the, the unity, the uniting, uniting together. I believe that we're living in a great oh, yeah. uniting time. Yeah. Yeah. I am uh, taking these red lights down and flash signals and everything of the women, how they do, and the man, how they do, and the churches, how they do showing to this little group with all my heart that I believe that we're lying in the line of God's word in this great prophetic hour just before the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Uniting together and getting ready. Now, you see, before Titus united the nations, of uh, his armies together, Israel united themselves together and banded themselves that they would not believe Jesus to be the Messiah. Amen. They rejected him and turned him off and crucified him. And then when they rejected the salvation that was sent to them, they united themselves together to do it. Now hold that in mind. Uniting themselves together to reject the message of the hour. Amen. They had to do that. And then when they did that, then the national sign come in. Amen. The nations begin to unite themselves together, and Titus brought this great army of Romans and Greeks and come past the walls of Jerusalem, pinned those people in there now, and they starved to death. 
They eat the bark from the trees. Josephus, the great historian, tells us. And they eat the grass off the ground. They even boil one of their children and eat it. See? That they were mad people. And then when finally Titus is sitting back up on the hills around Jerusalem there, and those people there thought they were doing the will of God. When they saw these armies marching in, they had refused to hear that great master, Lord Jesus, tell them that there wasn't one of them Christians caught in there. For they saw the sign and moved. See? They said, let Samus on the house top come out down at him. It's in the field. Go back, get out his coat. But flee into Judea and pray that your flight be not in the wintertime or on the Sabbath. Because in the wintertime, the, the hills will be full of snow. And on the Sabbath day, the doors is closed, the gates, and they'll be caught in that condition. See? We want to get on that pretty soon about the, how God does those things if the Lord is willing. Now it is. Now, he, they prayed that that would be that, not be that way. Jesus told them to pray for that. And they never caught one of them in there. They were gone. Because they looked at the sign and they were gone. That's all there was to it. Oh, how the church is the day to see the sign of the time that we're living in. Free as hard as you can to Calvary for life. Not to some church, but to Jesus Christ. Unite yourself with Him. And not with some organization or some church creed. Unite with Christ. Be sure that it's Him. You can't just pick anything. You've got to be positive that it's Him. What a time of union. Now we find out that they rejected the Messiah and then united themselves together and draw themselves a lead and made a, an emotion among them that if any persons received Jesus as a prophet, that they would be excommunicated from the church. You remember the blind boy? That was set with blinded eyes, and the yeah. disciples said, Who is seeing him or his father or his mother? And Jesus said, In this case, neither, but that the works of God might be done, made known. Yeah. And you remember, they said that the father and mother could not say, uh, they said, They know this is our son, but we don't know how he was healed. Because the Jews had said that any person that uh, confessed him to be the prophet, that they would be excommunicated. But see, the works of God was. That this boy didn't belong to that group. And he said, oh, it's a strange thing to me that you don't know where this man come from and yet he'd give me eyesight. See? Now he could say it. See, that was the works of God. He had been made healed and he, uh, well and he could, he could tell it because he had no strange tied to him from anywhere. Amen. He was the one the works was done on. Amen. And he certainly he saw it for his first time in his life. Yeah. Now, the Jews denied themselves against Jesus and, uh, and against his messiahship and his messiah message, we see the same thing now happening. Yeah. Just the same thing. Communism is uniting to destroy the church. Right. And the only way that it, that is, as the church has united itself to, and the council of churches, the world council of churches, to deny and to destroy the message, the word. Amen. They have turned down the word the churches have. Right. They cannot accept it because it's against their denominational creed no matter how many pillars of fire would hang in, our, in the midst of people, how many people uh, be, how many things would be foretold and happening, all the good signs that he promised of the last days. They cannot do it. Um, Therefore, they are uniting themselves now. And your pastor here, and many can tell you, is reading uh, that there has the economical uh, movement of the, the, the world. And there's a Lutheran minister over it that if there comes a disaster, what happens in this neighborhood here, if we are not united with that ecumenical move, then our church can no more be church. And they can use it for a storm. Or if one of us brothers would see somebody dying or hurt and try to minister to him any spiritual blessing, we could be shot for it. Yes, very much. Exactly right. Exactly. We could be given 10 years in a federal prison for ministering anything because we're not a member of this economical move. Don't you see the mark of the beast? Yes. <laughs> see? Now we see this uniting time coming. See? Now what? And then the church has united itself against the message. Yeah. And then when it does that, 
that the nations are uniting themselves in communism to destroy the church again. Amen. Just Amen. exactly what it did in the first place. Amen. It repeats itself right back again. Israel had to turn down the message first. And when they turned down the message, then the military, the national life, united itself together of other nations, they come in and destroy the church. And today, they have turned down the message of the Lord Jesus. And they have turned it down, and now the time has come where communism is uniting the world together against the church. It has to be that way. Now, it's hard to say that. It was hard for them Jews to believe. They said, now, come, brethren. We see that uh, our God is with us. And so we'll, we'll go into the temple, and now we will pray. And let Holy Father so-and-so, and Holy Father so-and-so, lead in prayer, close the gates. And Titus took his stand and stood right there for about a year or more. See? Right on guard. The stars are not out. There couldn't be a one of them. need to get outside the city. And they died, starved. And when he went in there and tore the walls down, the blood burst out and run like rivers down there where he slaughtered everything that was in there. Now the angel of the Lord prophesied that back in the Old Testament and told that that would happen. And then ministers who were clergy who were supposed to be posted on that and to tell the people that, instead of that, when Jesus stood up among them, they didn't even know. Him. And try to make a... Uh, some kind of a, a rabbit foot. Do us a trick. Let us see how, how it's done. Show us a sign. See? And he said, uh, well, he's done so many things, and yet they couldn't see it. See? Yeah. And then when they rejected him as a, the message of that day, they rejected the message of that day. They failed to see the sign of that day. And the sign of uh, the Bible's prophecy was made before him, and they said, let's go in now. Then we're holy then. They were mad that you couldn't lay your finger on their eyes. They couldn't be that. And then, and then uh, be a, a, a priest. A priest to be killed and be stoned to death for any little thing. So he had to live a clean, holy life. He could not do it because he was stoned for just anything. And now they were a great man and a holy man in the sight of the people. And yet they went in and said, Now we will, we've got God, the God who's been with us all through the ages. We will go into his holy temple. That was God's holy temple. But you see, he'd been turned down in his holy temple. Yes. See? Yes. We'll go into the house of the Lord. Now, all of you Hebrews know that we are the chosen race. We are here, and God is our God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's with us. He will deliver us from them uncircumcised Philistines out there as it was, them Romans and Greeks. He'll deliver us from that. Let's go into the house of the Lord. That sounds good. But what have they done? The builder of the house was in there the form of a lowly Galilean carpenter. And they turned him down. But God had vindicated him of being his messenger of the hour and the branch. And they turned it down so all the praying, all the sincerity, all the sacrifices didn't mean nothing to God. They had done it and God let this great army unite to destroy it. And we see today as the churches through the denominations and so forth turning down the Word of God. They don't want you telling them about these things and science can prove it by pictures and everything else and still they want nothing to do with it. So communism is forming to destroy just exactly like Titus did. And the Bible said this. Amen. Exactly. Ah, you see where we're in? The uniting time. When we see these things being united, oh, why we fail to see those things. You can, you can look in here in the scripture and see where that he promised or what he would do. Now we see it coming to pass. We see it in the church what he promised to do. We see it coming to pass. We see the nations united yeah. together. We see the isms united together. We see the churches uniting together. It's uniting time. Yeah. It's the hour of uniting. That's the spirit of the age. We've got to unite. Everything you talk about has got to be organized. Even the government won't receive it. Yeah. You get as a citizen. I see as a citizen. As a citizen of the United States, yes, uh, you'd give me a check for $5, I'll be garrison put my name on it. 
See, I couldn't do it. See, it's in uniting times. All oh, has to go through some union of some sort. And that union is the very thing that brings the mark of the beast. Amen. It's in uniting time, and it's working right on up into that. You can see it just with your plain eyes if you look at it. It's a uniting time where everything is uniting together. The Jews unite themselves against Jesus as their Messiah. Therefore, we see what happens. We see the same thing now. Communism united to destroy the church. And if the church has united in the World Council of Churches and trying to destroy the message, the Word of God. Yeah. They tried to get rid of it. The only thing they can do is to draw themselves a council because of their separated. A little group here, the Methodists and Baptists, Lutheran and Presbyterian, Church of Christ, and so forth like that. They can't do nothing. Because this will be against this and this will be against that. And their doctrine is just as much different as the East is from the West. Yeah. See? They can't do it. But once together, under one big head, they got it. Yeah. They got it then. That's where the Catholics are so in unity. The Roman Catholics. Of course, they're in the unity. They're the majority. Is the Roman Catholic, the Greek, and other Catholics are, are not as much as the Roman Catholics. Now, they unite together. And actually, they stand together. No matter what takes place, that Pope is the head of everything. Amen. See? And no matter what anybody else says, he's infallible. He's, he's, he's a biker of God. That's all. He's next to God. He's had the jurisdiction over hell, heaven, and purgatory. See? So there is a thing that can be done in that case. Whatever he says, that's what has to go. Now, the Protestants... It's making themselves a head just like that. Yeah. Yeah. And though the Bible said there was an image made unto the beast, what is the image? It's something like it. Made like it. Yeah. Now it is the same thing. What is it? By uniting themselves together. Yeah. And this is the spirit of the age is uniting. Uniting together. Now, try to destroy the message. How do they destroy it? How could they destroy the word of God? They can make it of non effect not affected by taking traditions as they did back there in the beginning and making the Word of God of no effect. See, they say, oh, that's really after all. You see what this infidel woman that's trying to, she, I forget what her name is now, if I could just call it, she, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of so many, I think of this Miss Nation, so yeah, I wish we had another night like that rise up. She's one went in the bar rooms and tore out the whiskey and Throw out the signs and everything like that. Why don't some woman rise up today like that and try to tear some of these naked pictures down of these women of her own race and things like that? They don't have it no more. Now, but this woman, an infidel, who says that uh, that the Bible is unconstitutional to read it in public schools and things like that. Now they also have you noticed again? They're trying to say now, and great studiers of the scriptures said that. Much of the prophecy that was prophesied in the Bible was absolutely wrong. It never did come to pass. And you've heard that and read it. And they're trying to say everything, you see. They're trying to destroy the effect of that word. Amen. If they can only uh, destroy and substitute for a creed of something that man has that seems in their eyes to be better than the word, then they destroy it with their, with their tradition. And that's how they're trying to destroy the Word of God by denominational politics. Now, each church has its own politics. The Church of Christ has this. The Christian Church has this. And the Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians, they all have their different politics. Now, they're getting away from that because they're separated. See, they couldn't have done it before. They've got to do it now. See, this is a uniting time. And now they're all putting it together and pulling it up and see what to come out with. My, it's like baking a loaf of bread out of the uh, horse meat and garbage out of the can and whatever more you have together and water it together and throw some rotten potatoes and things together and see what you come out with. I sure don't want any of it. No, sir. That's the way they're doing it. See, they're taking people who believe that Jesus was a myth. A church that believes that Jesus was a myth. The other some believes he was a prophet. One says the days of miracles is past. So I said there might be such a thing. And all this together, and the Bible said, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. See? Now that's the kind of unity they got and have some great holy father to put above it, and there you've got an image to the beast just exactly what the Bible says. Amen. Now we've got a Lutheran minister, the head of it. Well, we see it's uniting time. 
Same thing now, communism and all uniting together in the world and in the church and so forth, uniting together. Watch nature. Oh my, nature, if you just watch nature, does the same thing. Nature is God's calendar uh, of signs. Did you know that? Jesus told him to watch nature. The sea would be roared, see? And there would be different things, and earthquakes in diverse places, national strife, signs in the heaven, signs on the earth. Everywhere there would be signs at these coming times. Watch the clouds. Before the clouds can bring up a rainstorm, you know how it's done? Several little clouds get together. Make one big cloud. This has got a bunch of wind blowing it, this other's got a bunch of wind blowing it, and they all grow together, and then they got a hurricane. See, they unite before they can have the storm. They have to. What ducks and geese unite themselves together before they leave their country? See, they unite together. You can see them flying from this pond to that pond, from here over to there, all of them getting together. They're uniting, getting ready for their takeoff. See, it's just, that's nature. And God created nature. And nature works by the plan of God. It's a law, an unwritten law of God that nature works according to his law. Just like speaking at funeral service of the sap that goes down into the grave in the bottom of the tree root to lay there until the resurrection in the spring. It's a law of God. There's no intelligence can make that sap go down there. You couldn't drain it out. You couldn't milk it out. There's no way of doing it any better than God does it. God's got the perfect way, so when the leaf drops off, then he sends the sack down into the grave and hides it. It shows that hide me in the grave until my wrath be found. Yeah. See? It goes down there because it's a law of nature. Before frost of the leaves now begin to fall. Why? It's a law of nature. Ducks will get together, every one of them, and rally around a leader. In there, they'll know somehow, I don't know how they do it, but they know that that certain little drake is a leader. And that little fellow will all get together and rally right around him and rise right up in the air and he'll never been off that pond now, but he'll go just as straight to Louisiana or Texas as he can go to the rice field. See, before they take to their flight to leave their home where they've been born that year, they unite together. Amen. 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 There you are, rallying around the leader. The trouble of it is, the man he don't know his leader. Yeah, right. They'll rally around a denomination, they'll rally around a bishop or a man, but they won't rally around the leader, yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. in the Word. See, they say, oh, well, I'm afraid I get a little fanatically. I'm afraid I get off on the wrong foot. Oh, there you are. What the little ducks in there? I just don't like the way he keeps his feathers. I don't believe I'll follow him. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> You'll be caught up there if you don't take with the, with the flight as it goes. It unites itself together. And nature does that. Geese unite themselves together. Rally themselves around their leader. They do the same thing. Did you ever notice bees are swarming? Bees will unite themselves together before they swarm. Right around that queen. That's right. And where she goes, the way they go too. That's, what do they do? They unite before the swarm. Exactly, every nature. Fish unite themselves together before the spring runs. Out in the ocean, you can find them, and then they probably go companies of salmon. When they come up there, before that run comes in, you'll see them by the tens of thousands out in that sea, coming around and around. Salt water, but they're actually freshwater fish. And here they come right up that fresh water to go up for spawning season. They go up there and spawn about every four years and die as soon as they spawn. And they know they're going there to die. And you couldn't stop them with nothing. They'll jump fish ladders and everything else getting up there knowing they're going to their death. But the law of nature makes them knowing that they go up there and spawn and the old ones die and the young ones come on and something unites them together then and out into the ocean they go. It's a uniting. It's a law. You just can't beat God's law. Nations are are breaking uh, for the time now that we see that, that they're supposed to do this. We're in the process of national disturbance. We see that nations are breaking relationships. Year by year we find this nation being swallowed up in communism. 
This would be swallowed up in communism. And right here in our own nation, it's honeycombed with communism. And it will take over. Amen. It will. No way of stopping it. Why? The same reason that you couldn't stop Titus. The people have rejected God and His Word. Amen. Yes, sir. So they're going to do it. And we see it right in process. I usually take a couple hours. I've already been uh, about 30 minutes right now. See? But to get all this in and just push it, you study it when you get home. Notice, they're right now in the United. You say, Brother Branham, is that true? They're coming to the battle of Armageddon. Yes. That's exactly what they will do. See? And they're uniting for that right now. That's why we got the UN and everything we have. The Western world uniting against the Eastern world, communism and so forth. It's all united together. The churches are uniting together. Everything seems to be uniting. Uniting, uniting themselves together. We see that. Also, while all this uniting of the nations, these signs, national signs, we see out here in the world, earthquakes and diverse places, different things uniting. Bringing the world together, bringing the people together, all the churches together, all these things. And while all this uniting has been going on, there is another uniting going on. Amen. 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 That's what I want to point to you now. God is uniting His bride. Amen. He's coming together from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. There's a uniting time, and that's all right now. Amen. What's He uniting for? The rapture. Amen. 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 God's getting it ready. Yes, sir. Uniting. What's he uniting with? With the Word. Amen. For all heavens and earth will pass away, but my Word shall never pass away. Amen. She's uniting herself with the Spirit, the Lord, the promise of what any denomination anybody else says. Amen. She's uniting herself. She's getting ready. Why? She is a bride. Amen. That's right. And she's uniting herself with her bridegroom. Yes. Hey, and the bride... Room is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the church and the bride and the Word is becoming so one until the very uh, Word itself is working out the works of the bride. Is this a new night? Not no more join the church, not more of this, but free from everything and fight to Jesus Christ. It's the uniting time. God uniting his bride together. Bring it back. Just exactly. Uniting the words of his promise. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, it says this fifth chapter says, The saints that are asleep in the dust of the earth will waken. And then we will unite with them, the living ones, with the ones that's been dead. We'll Amen. unite before we even get up there, because the bride will be complete when she gets there. Amen. The Amen. ones that are living is united himself with the Lord, and those that are gone already did that, and it all comes together and makes one great union of the uniting before going up there. Hey, man, communism has to rise, these other things have to rise, and the church has to unite itself out there for the, and the nations. Now, therefore, the world has for churches, and the bride has to unite itself under the word of God. In order to do that, God has sent down the heavenly signs and things that prove to the church as you have to me. Amen. God, uniting time. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Now, remember, now there is a uniting of the word. Uniting back again. Bringing back the faith. That was once delivered to the saints. Oh, yeah. Bringing back that this could only be done in this day. Yeah. The only time it could be done is right now. It never was attacked it anywhere else. They went off on denominational spree. But now it don't go on no denominational spree. Yeah. Because it's time for the uniting yeah. of men and women of every race, every color, other yeah. priests, everything under Christ by the baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit yeah. and back to the Word. Uniting time for the church. Oh, my. Uniting of the Word. That's been scattered all abroad by these organizations ever since. And now I see alone when they organized the first church. And they've organized Luther. They organized Wesley. They organized all the rest of churches. And during that, they had to adopt a creed. And then when God sent St. Mel, they could not receive it. Therefore, it was not possible until now 
And God promised in the last days that the faith of the fathers would be restored back to the bride again, that it would be this way, and it couldn't be no other time but this time. Look what a sign from heaven as a pillar of fire hanging among us in the signs and wonders of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he speaks to us that never fails to be perfectly on the dark. Amen. And we see what we're standing. Uniting time. We see nations uniting. We see the world uniting. We see communism uniting. We see the churches uniting. And we see God uniting Himself with His bride. Yeah. Until yeah. He and the church is the same yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Uniting themselves together. God uniting. Why? Never before since the early church age was a pillar of fire ever among the people. Never before since the other church age did ever see the things that we're seeing today. Amen. And this was only made possible when God sent the seven seals and give us the Amen. Amen. by and by to send seven angels down out of heaven and come to bring back that scattered person Amen. that's not Amen. Amen. and tie it back into the word of God again to bring down his Holy Spirit. Jesus said, If ye abide in me and my word in you, then ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. Oh, Uniting the bride back with the word, which is God. The church and the word. Not church and the creed. Church and the word. The bride and the word. United together. Oh, my. What a restore back what? The faith of the original pinnacle of the Bible. Has been scattered by Luther group, not Luther himself, not Luther, not Wesley, not those great founders, but after they were going away, there was a church raised up, and they, what they did with that thing, they made an organization out of it. They accepted creeds and so forth, and away they went, and look at them today. Now they come into that world council of churches. Now you see, but in the last days, you see, we see things happening now that has never happened before. Oh, see, amen. it's God's sign, and all this uniting is a time sign. Now we want to look at that carefully and be real, sure that we get it. Leaving they leave the true word for denominations uh, uh, to accept creed and opinions of different men instead of taking the word. Revelation 10 said the seventh angel's message. Amen. Now remember, that's right at the seven trumpets. And the seven angels blow seven trumpets. That's what we're coming to next. But remember, very, very specifically it said... The angel is not the seventh angel's trumpet, but the seventh angel's message. Yeah, See? Not the trumpet angel, the message angel. Yeah, See, where the angel only sounded the trumpet, that seventh angel, the trumpet angel, but this is in the days of the message of the seventh angel. Right. See? When his message is finished. See, that's the church age message. And this time, then, he would, uh, the message, not the trumpet, and the mystery of God that's written in the Word should be finished. Now look what a day we're living in. Look at those seals, how that draws that scattered Word of God. What Luther and all the rest of them, the great reformers that went forth, come right back and show them in the Bible where there would be every man right to his spot. What he would do and what would happen to the church. What would he do and what would happen to the church. All these things you left off. And then in the last days, when we know nothing about it, foretold us of a certain thing happening, even the newspapers and things picked it up and comes right down and reveals it as ties the mysteries together. Amen. 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 Brother, that's the line to me. Amen. That's the line to me. I don't care what, what, I do care what people say, think that's right, but to me it's the truth. Amen. 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 Like the wise Hallelujah. man coming down from Bath and they scream, where is he born, king of the Jews? He's on earth right now. We've got to find him. That's right. And I believe he's so close to coming, I can say, Behold, the bridegroom coming. Amen. 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 We're right at the time of the Amen. end. Oh, ah, to the hour where this is. Notice. <laughs> what a day. What a time that we're living. This great mystery of God being finished. Bringing in the God here. Showing what it is. How these little isms and one off made him this and somebody made him this and somebody made him that. But the angel of the Lord come down and brought up all their isms and pulled out that truth out of it and presented it. There it is. This is perfect as it can be. No other way you could go. There it is. That's what he is. See, serpent seed, all, all these different things have been so mysteriously uh, amongst the people. See, what is it? He ha- this is the sign to what? Unite. 
What did he say in Malachi 4? Would restore. Yeah. Restore back the original Pentecostal faith. Amen. Back to the people with the same Pentecostal message, the same Hallelujah. Pentecostal sign, the same Pentecostal evidence, yeah. the same God, the same power, the same teaching. Yeah. Everything yeah. exactly yeah. was the vindication yeah. of the yeah. same yeah. thing of God that shut the fall down the rest of the heavens. We see the nations uniting, we see the world uniting, we see the churches uniting, we see the bride uniting. Yeah. Uniting with the Word. Why? The Word is God. And as the Word, as the Bridegroom being the Word, and the Bride being the hearer of the Word, they come together in a union. They unite like a wedding. See, they're getting ready for a wedding. They become one. The Word becomes you. You become the Word. Jesus said that day you know all the Father is, I am all I am, you are all you are, I am. <laughs> that day you go down and follow, follow me, I and you, you and me. See, that day, what is this day? Praise the Lord. We find out the great hidden mysteries of God being revealed. Oh, how I like that. Hallelujah. Oh, what? Our science and the Word could not compare as they do today. They couldn't do it before. It's just now that they can do it. Notice he says heavenly science. Heavenly science. Science and national science. Now they have a great science in the skies today. They have astronauts and everything. What does these astronauts do to the world science? It brings them fear. They don't know what time they just stand up something like that, just drop these bombs and we be no more. Amen. See? Now that's the science that they got fearful sights in heaven. See? They drop them. Atomic missiles and everything. All kinds of science. You see what they signed this this treaty the other day? That they were going to uh, not explore any more bombs out open, but now they're going under the water and down on the ground, testing just the same. See, it's signed a treaty. We won't do this if you say you won't do it, but we'll go back over home and do it this way. Well, we know you're doing the same way over there. See, it's just not a thing. It's just, there's not no trust among them. There's no, there's no nothing you can see. And everyone's scared of the other. That's a fearful sign. Science and man and nations have produced a fearful sign in the skies. That's exactly right. Now, fearing one another. There's been a heavenly sign give to the... See, now, they got a sign in the heaven, too, a fearful sign. A man in an astronaut might have an atomic missile that could drop and destroy the whole nation. Get up an astronaut and stand out there. There ain't nothing keeping them doing. They can sure do it anytime they want to. They can bring her into dust if they wanted to, but in 15 minutes from now. And one can do the other one that way, too. Yeah. So you see, that's, they got a sign. But that kind of sign makes them scared. They're uniting together, putting their powers together. The free world over there is putting its power together. The communism putting their power together in Russia. Everybody. But each one's scared of the other one. See, it's a fearful sign. That's right. That's national signs. But the church has received a heavenly sign. Amen. An astronaut. Praise Amen. Lord. Jesus Christ in the form of a pillar of fire. That he was in the Old Testament. That he was when he met Saul on the road yeah. down there to Damascus. Yeah. The same Jesus here today. Yeah. And what does it do? Does it bring fear? It brings love. Yeah. 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 A uniting of one another. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. A feeling for one another. Yeah. It brings the love of God. Oh, uniting us. It brings us the body of Christ into unity as a bride. Uh, that's what it's doing now. This great union. If God, they're uniting themselves, one group here to fight the other, one group over here to fight the other, the other church is standing between them. You watch what happens, they'll unite with them. That's exactly right. But now we find out that brings fear and frustration. But the church, the bride, is united by one God, Amen. under one spirit, Amen. the spirit of God, and one holy union of God, to be one holy bride. God. That's right. All together. The unity of the body. The body waiting. As the bride, as, as it is the bride, as we call ourselves the bride, for the uniting time of the bride, the church is so coming together. It should create just a love among us. That we can hardly be away from one another. That's right. We just, we don't have to beg people to pray. You don't have to beg them to worship God. You don't have to beg them to do what's right. They're just so in love with him until there's nothing else. What do you think about a little girl? 
a real pretty little maid that's going to marry some handsome young man that she's just so madly in love with it means more to her than her own life, and she knows right away that they're going to get married. Is that wedding day approaches? That little fella, I'm telling you, she's all walking around. See, she's just making everything ready. She surrenders completely to him. That's right. Everything that pleases him, that's just what she wants to do. Well, that should be the way of the church today. Right. But our life should be so hidden in God through Christ, sealed in there by the Holy Spirit. Or, uh, the thing I've been teaching to you here is telling you these signs and different things are happening. I haven't got time to do it now. Well, in another message, you'll already believe. But there's one little thing yet lacking in the church. And we want got to get to that. And I'm right on the edge of it now. See, we want to get to that. If you got to do it. If you don't do it, that's just all. You must do it. For looking. The United Time is at hand for God is getting the church together to be a, a rapture to go to the wedding for the great union. When God and man will unite for eternity. Amen. When creatures of time unite with the eternal. It was once done in the form of the Son of Man on earth, and he had to give his life to bring about a power to unite other man with the same power for the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the church is uniting itself. The, the body of Christ has got itself free, cut away from every little fetter, getting itself ready, yes. getting together, union among them, all oh, love and joy and the Holy Spirit moving among them. Oh, my, what a time. As we see the ducks getting ready, we see the geese getting ready, we see the bees, bees getting ready, we see the clouds getting ready for rain, we see everything hiding nice and stuff together for its great push. We see the League of Nations of the nations together uniting themselves in communism. We see them uniting themselves over here in the Western world. We see the church uniting itself together. All these other so it's absolutely impossible. No other time could it be this way. It could have been this way 20 years ago. Could have been this way. Could have been this way 10 years ago. Has to be right now. Yeah. See? Because these isms and things hadn't come to this place. Now, wake up, shake yourself right quick, look out here where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're like those wise men. We're right in line with this word. Yeah. Yeah. And the light of the Lord is shining upon our path. Glory be to God in the highest. Oh, Glory be to God who give us Jesus Christ who we love and has brought us to this place. Yeah. And if we, we are His people brought to the price of His blood. Oh, my. When the uniting time comes, we're looking as we unite with one another in the bonds of His Spirit. We see, can it be His Spirit? Sure, it's His Spirit. Why is it? It's His Word, and He is, that is the Spirit of the earth. And when that Spirit of promise comes up on you and vindicates and shows itself right here, is it the same Spirit? It was the one that was with Moses in the Word. It was the one that was upon Jesus Christ. He's the one that saw the Holy Lord to the Master. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he does the same thing. And we see the nations together. We see the church heads together. We see communism together. We see the isms united. We see all these things. And now we see the bride united with the word. Oh, my time that the saints shall arise to unite with those that are living to go and unite with Jesus Christ for eternity. And God help us every one to unite with Christ tonight. We'll surrender up everything that we are, everything that we have, our whole soul, body, and mind to Jesus Christ. And look for the time of that uniting when the trumpet of God shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the dead in Christ shall rise and get over on the other shore down there with the bride that's alive to be caught up together. Look at the uniting. God uniting the church with his word. The word with the church. That they both become the same. Say this, it'll happen. Do this, it'll happen. This is it. This is me for you. This is me proving it. This is me with you. All right, we find that now the time comes when the trumpet sounds. And those sleeping saints back there, they cannot be made perfect without us. They're depending on us, Hebrews 11. And when they come together, they unite with the living ones. The church uniting with the Word, 
Then the church and the world united together being coming one. The dead saints with the living saints united together to be one. And all going together to unite with Christ the honor for the wedding supper of the Lamb. It's the uniting time and the signs are flying everywhere. The signs are in the nations. The signs are in communism. The signs are in the West world. The signs in the year. Chemical churches and the sign is shared tonight under the office of the Holy Spirit. Hearing in the word of God confirming it and making it the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. The uniting power. The sign of the uniting power. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, if my poor heart jumps for joy as I see the possibilities of me, a middle-aged man, but yet the possibilities of me seeing you come in this generation. To be alive, to stand here, and see when that trumpet sounds, he that's filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous still. He that's holy is holy still. Oh, Lord God, to think of it, standing in a moment in a twinkle of an eye when the world won't know what's going on. But all of a sudden, you'll see appear before you your loved ones that's gone on and come to unite with you again. And we'll be changed in a moment in a twinkle of an eye because we're going to meet our Lord in the air. And we're going to unite with Him to be there forever and never to have to be out of His presence again. What a great thing it is today, Lord, to know that now we are united with one spirit. One spirit, the Holy Spirit, has got the word in His grip comes with us, and what a great thing it is, what a privilege to cut loose from all the world, to unite ourselves to Jesus Christ, and to think that someday in a physical form, with a body like his own glorious body, we will sit down at the table at the wedding supper, and there be united and wear marriage to him, to live as bride and bridegroom through all times that is to come, to a secret eternity. Lord, God, may this not be just a mythical thought to the people, but may it become such a reality that such hunger and thirst will set into the people that they'll read the newspapers, look at the phone, listen to the radio and the news, and see it, it's the uniting time. The signs are flashing. Lord, God, like we spoke of the women, what they are doing in the last days, what the church is doing in the last days, and what the church ages would be, and what the seals would be, all these other things, and we see as it was the days of Noah, we see as it was the days of Sodom and Lot, when the angel of God made himself known in human flesh, that eat the flesh of a cow, and drinking the milk from the cow, and eat bread, and stood there and could tell what was going on behind him. And Jesus said the same thing will take place at the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, Lord God, we've seen the pyramid, how we build it up there, and see how we added these things to it, and find that we're at the end time waiting for the chief cornerstone. Yes. Glory to God, we pray, uh, Father, that you'll wake people up quickly now and get us together with godly love and respect to Jesus Christ uh, and to each other. If there be some here tonight that doesn't have that hope resting within you, Will you raise your hand to God and say, Lord God, unite me with you. Unite me with you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. You, you, yes. Unite me with you, Lord. Yes. Oh, my. Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. Look at Israel. They're united together. Israel from all over the world has come to unite themselves. They unite themselves and now they are a nation. They are a united nation with their own flag, own money, own the army, everything. If they ever was, they are now. Israel united. Rome is united. The church is united. And the pride is united. Amen. And the coming of that great union. What is it? It's all moving up to that sign, that main capital sign, Jesus and his bride. United as one. Father God, grant these blessings that I ask for these people, and may we be united to you in heart and spirit as they raise your hands, desiring that, Lord, God cleanse us and make us yours. Grant it, Lord. That's all we know that we can do is ask. And then you said, if we ask it and believe it, we should receive it. I'm looking for it, Lord. I thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I love him. I love him. Because he first loved me. And just my
Oh, the bridegroom cometh. I hear the midnight cry. We'll go up with a shout if we we'll all hold out the meeting in the sky. Hallelujah. Watch and pray, my brother, unless someone takes your crown. One of the lukewarm and backsliders won't wear the very gown. That's right. Let's get ready for this midnight cry. It's coming in an hour when you think not. There'll be a cry. Not amongst the unbelieving world, it'll be a secret. But the believers who are looking for it, you see the stars coming in line? See? What did it produce? Just exactly like it did the first time. See? Here we are. The signs are coming. We see the signs appearing. All this blessed coming. Lo and behold, the fig leaves. Now they come in green. The gospel of the kingdom has gone to every nation, and we're near the end, can be seen. Then gladly the world will share the message of his blessed appearing. Is that right? Oh, hear the message of his blessed appearing. That's what we got to do. Tell everybody, get ready and prepare to meet God. Amen. I love him. Oh, how I love him. I will stand up on our feet now as we bid one another reach around and shake hands with somebody and say, until we meet. Shake hands now. Till we meet. Till we meet. And he starts to Till we meet. Remember, you might have a call. Before we meet again, before we meet Sunday morning or Wednesday night, that may be the first thing you know, somebody's missing, this is missing, and they're gone. Oh, to think of your husband missing, or your wife missing, it, and John's wife missing, it, and, and, and over here, the kids are missing. All happened once, took place. Then you're left behind. Oh, what a weeping and wailing. Well, the lost were told of their faith. They cried to the rocks and the mountains, like Israel, and going back into the city, to the temple, they prayed, but their prayers were too late. They rejected the message. Oh, brother, don't never do that. Whatever you do, stand gallant to the call. Yes, sir. Now, until we meet, we'll do this. Take the name of Jesus with you. As a shield from every death, when temptations round together, what do you do? Breathe that holy name in prayer, precious name, O Oh, Father, and your 